from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2020, virtual. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon CloudNativeCon 2020, the Europe virtual edition. Happy to welcome back to the program, fresh off the keynote stage, Priyanka Sharma. She's the general manager of the CNCF. Priyanka, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, great to see you and uh, we, we all get to be together even while we're apart. That's absolutely right. Thank you so much for having me, Stu, and great energy in the interrupts today with my keynote and everybody engaging and attending KubeCon. So very happy to be here. All right, so I want to dig into your keynote a little bit. Uh, it's had a bunch of key themes, a lot of pieces, and of course, community at the heart of it. Uh, when I spoke with you when you first took the job, of course, you've got strong background, you know this community really well. Uh, we've loved covering it for the last five years. Uh, but you talked about the foundation of doers and how that's powering the end user driven open source. So talk to us a little bit about that. You know, how is this community different from, you know, everything else, you know, open source always is community, but this, this feels a little bit special. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that it is special. Um, yes. So when you think about the cloud native ecosystem, right? There's so many people who come together to create this amazing feel that we all get to create the awesome technology that people use to be part of this whole technology creation and de deployment process. Those people are the end users first and foremost. They, they utilize the technology every day. And as time has grown, uh, as time has gone by, they have be played a bigger and bigger role. Over time, they've become very sophisticated. They're contributing their own projects such as, you know, um, I mean, you all know, uh, Envoy and uh, Jaeger came from Lyft and Uber respectively. But there's many more like Spotify and Wayfair, the furniture company. They have all submitted projects for the sandbox. Um, so there's a lot of momentum, but not only are they creating their own uh, technologies where needed and donating them, they're becoming the guider. They're becoming the guides for the projects that exist. They're giving feedback, they're sharing requirements. It's a very um, uh, collaborative process. And that's what is end user driven open source. Now, this end user driven open source cannot happen by one contributor alone, by one maintainer alone, by one company. No, it takes a lot of people. I mean, CNCF, as you know, has invested in its global community since day one. That's why we have the KubeCon EU, we have China events, we have North America. And just the other day, I was speaking on a virtual Brazil event. There's just the, the geographic diversity is amazing. And by being able to reach out to a very large uh, ecosystem, and by especially having a formal role for end users, uh, by having an end user member program with their own uh, special interest groups and working groups, we've created a safe space where there is a neutral IP zone, open governance, and also a clear directive and um, shared partnership with the end users. So that ends up being a large group of people who are all doers, everybody's uh, collaboration matters, and together they create end user driven open source. Well, and, and Prank, I'm not sure that, that most people understand really the full charter of what the CNCF does. So maybe you could talk a little bit about, uh, obviously there's all the projects involved. You just brought up some of the end users and how you get engaged. Uh, there's also help along career development when you talk to the mm -hmm. individual de developers and participants. So help us understand, you know, beyond the big events that we gather people at and even right. some of the smaller events, just, you know, what the, what the CNCF sees its charter as these days. Absolutely. So as some of you know, uh, the CNCF stands for Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And our objective is to host and proliferate technologies that support development, uh, infrastructure development that is cloud native. Now, what does cloud native mean? Cloud native is when you develop, when you utilize cloud computing, which is, you know, the big clouds you must have heard of, such as uh, Alibaba Cloud, AWS, Google Cloud Platform, Azure, IBM, all these hyperscalers, they provide these offerings by which you don't need to have your own server farm and you can um, buy compute from them and run your um, applications on that. When you do that, 
the way you develop software changes. It should change in order to maximize the value you get. So uh, you start developing with microservices, containerization happens. Once that happens, you need to orchestrate the containers, which is where Kubernetes, our founding project comes in. Uh, and then you go from there because you have different complexities in observability, you have different complexities in storage and all the cloud native tech comes together to support you in that journey. So from a technology perspective, that's what we do. As we have been so fortunate to develop this large ecosystem with so many people joining in of all kinds, we believe it is part of our uh, responsibility to support this community in skill development and um, always like knowledge sharing. So knowledge sharing community empowers education and that's why we talked about the events, right? Like KubeCon, et cetera. But also these days we are focusing a lot on our training programs with the certifications we offer such as uh, CKA, which stands for a Certified Kubernetes Admin and CCAD, which stands for Certified Kubernetes Application Developer. To date, 15,000 plus people have taken these certifications successfully. So we have more and more people joining in these ranks and we're here to support people as they build their careers, as they get more knowledgeable on cloud native from informal ways such as training and certs and in informal ways such as the KubeCons and the meetups and the webinars, you name it and we're here for you. Well, you used a word that I, that I want to touch on, responsibility. Uh, obviously in 2020, uh, there's, there's a lot going on, Priyanka. So first of all, you talk about the global pandemic. You know, Some of the, my favorite interviews I've done for this shows and others, talking about how open source and communities are contributing yeah. to it. Uh, one of the interviews I have coming up for the KubeCon show uh, is out of the Toronto area with How's mm -hmm. My Flattening, which uses data and visualization. Uh, really phenomenal to see how you know Kubernetes and uh, collaboration allowed people to rally fast and share data and get information to the right people. The other piece is social justice. Uh, you announced uh, a new uh, working group for racial terminology. Talk about, you know, how's the CNCF, you know, dealing with, you know, all the changes and all the things that are happening in 2020 and, and how are you helping uh, the community get, in, get engaged and, and participate? Absolutely. 2020 is a very unique year it's had very unique challenges. We've all been through it together as a global community. So in that way, it has brought us all together. Um, but the fissures and cracks that maybe were overlooked before have gotten deeper this year. And we are committed to bringing the open source cloud native way to help support this whole global push to overcome 2020 as a year. Um, so, Part of that, as I said, um, as you said, uh, we have a working group for uh, to er eradicate ra racially charged tech. Sorry, <laughs> I am really not speaking well today. Um, so part of our uh, initiatives is a working group to eradicate racially charged terminology from code. Uh, we're working on it, not just on the CNCF level, but on the entire Linux Foundation level. We're bringing together various um, folks, such as companies, projects, regardless of where, where they sit, they don't need to be a, an LF project or a CNCF project, but we're sharing best practices on what's, what should be the terminology we agree upon. What is the change management look like? And soon we want to really encourage the people who are making these positive steps with some, an enablement and incentive program such as prizes, et cetera. So I'm very committed to this. I think anyone and everyone has a home in open source. This cannot be, you know, the staked ground of one type of person or one type of community. And we're going to do our very best to welcome each and every one. This world of technology has been built by the blood, sweat, and tears of many people, and we honor them all. And we also open our arms to more and more of you, no matter how few of uh, people from your ecosystem or community you see in open source. Join in. We welcome you. We're here for you. And this working group and this initiative hopes to voice exactly just that. Well, yeah, the, the, the KubeCons, absolutely. I can speak from the events I've gone to, uh, you know, strong diversity. Uh, we, we've really appreciated uh, being able to hear those voices. When you talk about uh, the collaboration, the community activity, uh, we love when we can help support those from, from our team standpoint, uh, when we can. We want to be able to help those nonprofits, uh, help those communities get their messages and, and do their call to actions. 
All right, Priyanka, uh, so much to cover uh, this week. Uh, when I look at uh, you know all the breakouts, when I look at the interviews and the technologies, uh, there, there's a lot of emerging themes also. Uh, you know, edge computing's been something we've been talking about for the mm -hmm. last year or two. Uh, of course, IoT, you know, DevSecOps. What, what, what are some of the, the hot technologies that, that, that you're seeing and making sure that, uh, th that the show uh, covers? Well, you said them all. <laughs> <laughs> No, but these are the key themes. Yes, absolutely. Um, as you know, devices are proliferating across the globe. So many people have cell phones. With the coming of 5G, things will be even more uh, rocket ship. And these folks need to go cloud native to support development as this change happens. And Kubernetes and CNCF is here, here to support. We have projects such as CubeEdge. We have K3S from... Um, uh, Rancher in the sandbox, all these are meant for edge deployment. Um, so there's that focus that we have. There's always going to be DevSecOps. The minute there is this complexity, the minute there's this growth, new secu security vulnerabilities pop up, new interfaces become exposed. And so we have to be on a constant watch. So DevSecOps is a theme that we are going to see a lot of innovation and development in. Uh, for anyone who may not be familiar with DevSecOps, uh, DevSecOps does for um, security, what DevOps did for operations, which is shifted left into the developer application developer's workflow so that things are caught faster, so that there is a better collaboration between security teams and application development teams. So these are absolutely trends. I think um, a trend we briefly touched upon is end user driven open source. I think the voice of end users is going to grow bigger and more louder and just that much more critical. The, 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 the ship has left the dock and now it's just going to gain steam and gain steam. Uh, I think we're going to see more technology contributions from them. We're going to see much more utilization of cloud native from them. And we also will get lots of feedback and advice from them and they'll be interwoven into the fabric of cloud native um, in a way like never before. Yeah, uh, Priyanka, you you've known this community, but now you're you're very steeped into it. You had to work <laughs> with a lot of people. I, I'm curious, just you know, anything, especially from those end users. You know, big mm -hmm. focus of what you've been talking about. Absolutely, just so important that they not just use the technology, but are participate in it. It's been one of those big waves we've been watching in the open source community for a, a number of years. So. You know, any insights you can give us as to why it is so important to those end users, what is encouraging them not just to, you know, use these projects, but, you know, assign people and sponsor events and, you know, have much deeper integration with this community. Um, they don't integrate with this community. They are, they are part of this community. So that's one key thing to remember. Um, I would say when we all, like, I mean, CNCF is relatively young. It started end of 2015. I started working on uh, a project in it in 2016. And back then we were talking about things like what are microservices, how to do a lift and shift to the cloud, or where, what is contain, what are containers, things like that, right? And there was a, maybe a bit of a gap in like the knowledge that people had to acquire to get good at deploying containers, at using uh, microservices, et cetera, et cetera. Now, in the last four years, huge leaps have been made by end users just because they were in the trenches, they were doing the work, right? So now their knowledge level has gone really up. And they've also started you know, like knowing, right, where the gaps are, what they need, because they're doing the building, they're the doers here. And so in that environment, it is a natural thing that they will have a, the best sense of where things should go next. They will have the best sense of what their own requirements are. And so it's an evolution of our of the end user community. It's an evolution of the doers. And um, I think this is that's why this trend is going to continue. And I would like to take, a, not a credit, but uh, I would say a tiny shout out to the CNCF ecosystem program, which is run by Cheryl on my team. She's done a phenomenal job having been a developer herself to bring people in, create safe spaces where uh, the enhancers or the vendors are not like necessarily breathing down their neck and the, they can discuss amongst each other the topics that matter. And I think that's gone a really long way. 
Yeah, uh, there's uh, Cheryl's been doing some great work. Uh, I, I know I'm having a conversation with Liz Rice to talk about uh, some of the new tooling, helping customers understand. It's, it's such a broad ecosystem out there uh, that you know we, we didn't even touch on. We're going to talk in many of the other interviews I have, Priyanka. Just so many projects, new ways for sandbox and incubation and everything like that. Uh, it, it, it is definitely a challenge for everybody to look at this space. I want to give you the final word though. What do you want people uh, to have as their takeaway uh, for, from the event this time? Absolutely. Hi, everybody. I am so happy you all took the time and engaged with the community. You joined in and attended KubeCon EU Virtual. Stay with us. Keep partnering with us. Come to our events. Give us feedback. Share ideas. We're all a foundation of doers. We're all Team Cloud Native. And we're in this together. We will go through 2020. We'll come out strong. And this is just the beginning. Well, Priyanka, thank you so much. We love the partnership with the CNCF and definitely happy to be able to participate in the event again this year. Absolutely, thank you so much, Stu. All right, and stay tuned. Lots of coverage here from KubeCon, Cloud Native Con 2020, Europe, the virtual edition. I'm Stu Miniman and thank you as always for watching theCUBE.